Welcome back to the shop, guys. Today, as promised, is the follow-up video showing exactly how I was able to drill the two front exhaust manifold studs out on that 4.6 liter three valve engine found in the 06 to 2010 Ford Explorer. Now, if you haven't seen my exhaust manifold replacement video, I'll link to that down below on the 4.6 liter three valve, and it also kind of applies to the 5.4 liter three valve engines also. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how I was able to get those, I was able to get in there, drill out, and extract the two front studs on cylinder one. Now the problem with the Explorers is that there's a big old shock tower right in the way. I mean, it's right there. So even the right angle drill, it's really tight to get in there. But today I'm gonna to show you some tips and tricks and the exact extractor I used and the modifications I had to do to the drill bits to actually get in there, drill it, drill it straight, and extract them out of there. Now on the Explorers, it's a real pain, like I said, because of the shock tower, but if you're working on a 5.4 liter three valve, the same procedures apply that I'm gonna show you, but yours are usually broken in the back of the exhaust manifold, and they're much easier to work on. So what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you on the bench exactly how I drilled them out, uh, because it's gonna be a lot clearer than on the car. And then on the car, I'm gonna show you some heating techniques and extracting techniques uh, to get them out of there and prevent uh, pulling the heads, basically. You don't wanna pull the heads on these, these engines. Everything's pretty tight in there. And uh, it, it, it's a lot of work and a lot of money. If you can do it this way and not damage the head, this is the route to go. Okay, so as far as the tools, you're gonna need a few basic tools to get this job done. And we'll start over here with the extractor set. Now the reason I chose this extractor set is because it grips so darn well, but also because of the short length of the extractor. It makes it very easy to get in that tight area and get your job done, get it done right. Now also it has a hex holding feature on it here that's the full length of the extractor. That's a very nice feature on there. So you can put an open end wrench, a box end wrench, a gear wrench, um, a, a crescent wrench, even a socket onto here and you'll be able to use it in many different tight areas and be able to turn it out of there. Also the tip of it here only needs to go into the drilled out stud about an eighth of an inch or so and that works out really well for our situation with the cylinder head where it's, you don't wanna to drill too far into a cylinder head to extract anything ever. Especially in the 4.6 liter three valve, the top one, we're gonna be drilling at a slight angle to get into there. So these work out perfect for this situation. You're gonna need a right angle drill, three eighths is just fine, nice and small like this. And then the most important part is a quality drill bit set like this. And the reason why I chose this one is because it was sitting around, it was brand new, that's the most important part. Get a brand new drill bit set so when you start drilling, it actually starts drilling into and chipping away at the material instead of walking all over the place. And that's the other point. You want to, if you don't go with the Milwaukee set, you want to go with a, a set that advertises something like this where they have some kind of uh, point design that prevents walking of the drill bit across the flat surface onto there because it's gonna be very hard to get a center punch like this in there and center punch that, that stud, especially the top one. So a brand new drill bit set is a must. And the reason I use the, um, the black oxide is because you're gonna have to cut down these drill bits to your custom length to get into there. So you don't wanna do that on a brand new expensive cobalt set. So what I used was 1 16th through 1 8th, um, each one of them all the way up. And so I can get to that size um, for the extractor and be able to extract it out of there and bite into it properly. And what I'll do is I'll measure each one of these, the final end result after I cut them down um, so you guys have a reference of what I used. Um, but in general, you wanna cut them down as far as possible so you can get into there and drill as straight as possible. Now in order to get the clearance to get up in there with the drill and all these little tools up in here, um, I'm going to, well, I actually did suck down the AC system already. I'm gonna pull these lines off and the studs, nuts, all that stuff get them out of the way and I'll have better access to that lower one. What you can do, if you don't have um, the machine to recover it, you can just simply take the bolts out from the AC compressor and the whole thing will just drop down and forward and out of the way, pull the belt off obviously, obviously stuff like that. And then you'll have access over here also. 
So we're gonna go ahead and try this. Okay, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and drill these out on the vise here. And just imagine for a second here, this is the lower stud that's broken, and this is the upper stud that is broken. So we're gonna start off with the lower one first. We're gonna go through it. Now this lower one, I believe I was able to use a center punch on um, and, and center punch it just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's see if you'll find this. So you want to center punch it, of course, in the center the best you can. Now they're not always going to be nice and flush like this. That's where a center punch comes in. So you can get, and you just need to hit it once. If you want to, you can get it centered in there again and hit it again. Um, but after that, you should be able to start drilling and, and get it out of there. Now, of course, we're going to start off from the 8th, the, the 16th, all the way up to the 8th. And that's like a needle tip bit on here. So that'll get you started and get you centered and get our hole started. And we can just build from there. So we're going to go ahead and put this into here. And like I said, each one of these have been cut down to a custom length so we can get in there and drill them out. Now I don't use any cutting oil, anything like that. It's not too hard to cut through mild steel. Uh, if you want to, you can spray some WD-40 on here. We're basically just gonna drill into it just a little bit. So we're gonna center it in there. We're gonna start off slow so we get it centered and we start chipping away. <laughs> What you don't want to do is really push these needle tip, these you know super small bits too much. You want to put even pressure on it and just let it do its work. about it as far as you need to go and after that you simply repeat with each one of these bits going up and that will make sure that we are drilling straight we're following the old hole which was drilled straight to begin with and we don't break off any bits in here that's the most important part you don't want to be drilling out freaking broken bits too that's when it gets real fun now that first one should be the biggest pain you got to get it straight, you got to start drilling, and then of course, um, you don't want to break anything. So the first one, the first hole you're drilling on there is the most important. After that, we can just go ahead and follow the path of the old hole. We're just stepping it up each time. <laughs> Now what you're gonna notice is each time we go to the bigger sizes, of course they're naturally gonna be longer, so you're gonna cut more off. So on this one, we basically cut it off all the way up almost to the, the flutes on there. And that's why I say you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to basically destroy these bits, but it's for a good cause, uh, for sure here. Anything is better than Pulling the cylinder heads. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> and once you get to these bigger sizes like this, um, it really helps out. It just flies right through it. Um, you know, this one right here, it's all the way down to the flutes already. That's how far I had to cut it. All right, 
right, so we're going to cut and clean off the area. If you have compressed air, blow it out a little bit so the extractor can get fully seated in there. Now at this point, you want to make sure the extractor uh, can go into it and bite into it, okay? You can start it by hand like that and you can feel it's biting and it's going to actually grab and start pulling it out. Then you're going to want to put on an open end wrench onto here and start trying to loosen it. Make sure that stud turns inside of there. If it's frozen inside of there, at this point when I take your extractor out, with the hole drilled, we can put heat to it and that heat will get further down into the threads in the cylinder head there and loosen up this broken stud. Usually it isn't a problem and if you do have to use heat, it shouldn't take that much heat. Uh, to start getting this thing loose and then the extractor can do the rest. So you just go ahead and put it onto there. Now because you don't want to drill too large of a hole, this is the size I use, the number one uh, grab it bit on here. And that one got mine out. Now of course you can probably go to the next size up, but as you can see, based on the tip of it, you're starting to get a little bigger into the hole there. So um, you want to watch it. So go with the smallest extractor that you can. And you just push it into there and turn to the left and you'll feel it. It'll start grabbing big time. Okay, I busted the micro set out. Since the thing spun and it went deeper up into there. Great, we know it's loose. I got it drilled out. So the micro one went in there, and it's biting. So now I just need to turn it all the way out with a mini, mini crescent wrench. So I'll try to prop you up here so you can see exactly what's going on. All right, so check this out. It's got a grip of it. This is loose in there, but I got no way of getting it out. It has slight resistance. You know, from the threads in the bore not being perfect from corrosion over the years. But now it's coming out towards the surface, slowly but surely. I thought I'd never use this crescent wrench. And this part's going to be easy. When we get to the front here, well, there's a little bit of thread damage from corrosion and stuff. So we're really going to test it, but as we turn it, when we start binding in the front threads, this should actually bite more. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is, if I can see it go forward, and it'll fall right out. You can see it's right there. Let me get you up in there. All right, you can see I have a perfectly centered hole in there. Pretty much, look at that, it's nice. Um, but these threads in the end are really pushing its limits, so I might do a thread chase in there. Okay, so what I decided to do was, since it's flushed out now, and I can get the right size grabber in there, this big one, which has a quarter inch shank on it, for a ratchet, is use that, and when it comes out, it'll fix the threads at the very end there. This thing's still in there pretty far, so it'll follow the thread path of the other ones and it'll cut the threads or fix the threads perfectly as all these threads come out. But as you can see, it's coming out. And we knew this one was loose. We just need to grab onto it to get it out of here. And this will fix the threads when it comes out too. Hopefully the top one goes just as easy. I need to save this guy a ton of dough. At this point, we got to get that top one. Look at all these threads, see what I'm saying? So it's me cutting past that very front for how long uh, before I finally get this thing out of here. And that should, you know, either fix the threads or cut the threads perfectly. Look at that. Needs a little clean out with some air. 
ready to go. Now I got this one left. Okay, now once the lower one's out, you have your practice and your method down, you wanna move on to the upper one here. And the reason why this one's so much harder is because the cylinder head and the shock tower kinda of come together at an angle and it makes it a lot harder to get to. What you wanna do with this one is come at it at an angle like this. You're gonna to have to because of the tight quarters in there. But what we wanna do is drill in at the bottom of it here without getting into the threads, obviously and go at an angle, just like this, okay? And that way you can get your eighth or quarter inch or whatever of depth into the, into the stud for your extractor without coming through on the other side here. Besides that, the process is the same for extracting as the lower one on here. If you need to, put heat onto it, but otherwise that extractor set works very well at gripping it tighter and tighter as you, as you start pulling it out of there and the resistance is felt, just digs into it deeper and deeper. So it works out very well and you should be able to get this top one out also because you only need to go in so far for this extractor set. Now, especially this top one, when you're drilling, you're drilling at an angle. Um, depth gauge it with your bit here. We can see we're going in only so far at such an angle. We're obviously not coming out the other side, so you can really tell. All right, so after drilling out the second hole and applying a little bit of heat at the map and oxygen kit here, check it out. I put the extractor into it. I'll get you up in here and focus this top one. It was, I happened to hit it just right in the center because um, I couldn't get a center punch in there. But look at this. I've got it in there by hand and it's grabbing it. That's fine, right? But it's also turning it inside of there. Now, of course, it won't turn, but you see the threads are right here. I messed the threads up a little bit right there, but that's how that's coming out when it's coming out like that. Before this, the threads are just fine. They're a little bit galled up from the corrosion, just like the lower one. We had to get past them. So I'm going to put this on here and uh, put the socket and the ratchet back on here a quarter inch. But the big thing is, when I first put it in here, even by hand, it was moving before. This thing would not move uh, with any kind of heat or anything. Uh, and now with drilling it out and heating it and get the heat down the center there, okay, we can, uh, we can get it moving. So it's not frozen inside of there. We just need to get to pass the threads on the outside here, which should be no big deal. And then I'll just chase those real quick. So this is looking very promising. Okay, here we go. Make sure I get it in there nice and straight so it bites. What's nice about these extractors is that they don't need you to go way in there and grip. I wouldn't say they can, there we go. Oh man, that is coming out by hand again. Okay, um, these don't need you to go in too far. Since I was drilling at an angle, of course I didn't want to go in too far and start going to the head, etc. So um, it was nice, I only had to go in maybe, a, I'd say an eighth of an inch or so. Maybe a little more than that. And uh, that's all this thing needs. Okay. Let's get this on here. The, the big thing is that it's loose. It's loose from the head threads. You know, and I, there's no question this thing will bite and pull it out. I just need to be loose from the threads in the head, which I can't get to, except with heat. And now we're past that front on there. And the same thing as the other one, it'll clean the threads on the very edge of our corroded as it comes out. You can do this by hand, you won't strip anything, won't do anything stupid. Look at that. 
That's freaking beautiful. Bombing out here in the shock tower, man. It's that close. So I guess we're going to the. That thing's bit into it now. I can use the quarter inch. Look at this thing coming right out. Amazing. So, so far, this seems to be the method that works. We can get these out of here. Now, if this thing goes in here and it can't start moving it, um, I would definitely do the heat treatment once the hole's drilled in it. So we can get the stud separated from the head inside of there. If you expand and contract cycles in there, and it'll be broken free from the rust bond, plus the croil oil. Uh, before that, I soaked it while the threads were exposed. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Where'd you at? There you go. All the way around. You can see I drilled in the angle, but I didn't come out the other side and mess the head up. You can see the threads are fully intact all the way around. That's great. Okay, now that all the studs are out of here, successful all the way down. Of course, these two are extracted. I'm going to shoot a little brake clean in there and clean them out. Some compressed air. And then we're going to at least thread chase these two. So there's no issues. You want the new studs to fully seat as far in as they can go so they do not have issues with pulling out of the head. When you torque down that manifold, those nuts can be torqued down to, I don't know what, what it is, I think it's 18 foot pounds, but it's a lot. It's a lot of pull on those studs. So you want them to be fully inserted in there as far as possible, as far as they should go, um, you know, from the fact with what, what they were designed for. So, success. Okay, so hopefully this was clear enough so you guys have a good general idea of how to attack this situation that you most likely will experience if you have an exhaust manifold leak. It's not leaking because of the gaskets, it's leaking because one to three of the exhaust manifold studs have broken on there, losing the clamp load and causing it to leak on there. So I'll link down below to all this stuff that I, I use to get these out of there and what actually works so you guys have it on hand because usually these parts or these tools, they're usually not available at your local hardware store, specialty type tools, and you wanna make sure you use the proper extractor sets to get them out of there instead of using cheapy ones and that just spins in there and causes a bigger problem than we started with. So hopefully this helps. I know it's a tough situation doing exhaust manifolds and now you have to deal with broken studs too, but with these tips, hopefully you'll be able to get it out of there without pulling the cylinder heads and save yourself some time and money.